Hey, we're Anna and Jennifer Smith with Marriage After God. Helping you cultivate an extraordinary marriage. And today we're going to give you our favorite tips on traveling as a family. So before we get started, why don't we just give them a little bit of background on our history of traveling as as a married couple and then as a family with well, children. Well, we've loved traveling. We've loved the excitement, you know, surrounding travel. And um, I don't know, I just feel like it's always been a part of um, our story and what we do. Yeah, we've done everything. We've um, road tripped back yeah. and forth across the United States a we've couple done times. done mission work internationally. International missions. Um, and now that we have kids... Um, actually leading up to kids, we had a lot of people, you know, unknowingly give us negative um, responses saying like, oh, good thing you did all your traveling, you know, before you had kids, because once you have kids, there's no more traveling. And they kind of said those sort of things to us. So our intention with this episode is to give you guys a positive um, insight into the idea of traveling as a family, because even though lots of people told us that, we actually fought that We notion. didn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, no, actually, you know, of course it's going to look different, but we're going to not we're not going to say no to traveling just because now we have kids. And sure, it looks a little bit different, but a lot different, it's, yeah. but it's still really fun and we still really enjoy it. And so we just thought, yeah, with today's mm-hmm. episode, we would encourage those of you who are, um, you know, either planning a trip or will be planning a trip mm-hmm. um, together as a family. And we just hope that our, our um, advice or our tips or our tricks would um, help you. Yeah, and we've traveled a lot. We've traveled uh, with every single one of our kids, mm-hmm. with all of them, mm-hmm. and uh, we've never traveled with four yet. We're yeah, gonna, we'll, we'll be doing that soon. Yeah, that's soon, but um, so we've traveled with one, and mm-hmm. then two, and then three, so we we get like the whole gamut of traveling in airports and small cars and long trips and mm-hmm. um, tiredness, so we're just going to share with you our tips on um, making it as uh, enjoyable as possible, about surviving the times that are hard, mm-hmm. and just getting our perspectives right on the idea of traveling with our kids. Um, Because at the end of the day, like we want to, we want to give our kids things. We want to, we want to give them experiences and, and show them the world and, um, and make it a, an enjoyable thing. Yeah. Not, not a stressful or hard thing, which sometimes that's, that's (laughs) what it is. Okay. So the first one that we want to mention is pack light. Um, this is a really hard one, I think for everyone who's traveling. Um, and so you guys might relate with this, but for us, I know that it requires me to first do all of the laundry and get prepared that way. But, um, I have to pack and then I unpack everything and repack Mm. with less stuff because the truth is from our experience of traveling, you don't use it all. And it's really a waste, um, to, to bring more things than you need, regardless of how you're getting to where you're going. If it doesn't matter if it's a plane ride or a road trip, you you're limited on space. You're limited on strength, on how much you can carry and so it's just really important that you um only bring you know essentials only bring what you think you'll need and remember this guys most likely where you're going you'll be able to do laundry or buy something well every hotel has a a laundromat yeah um and yeah and there's there's grocery stores there's targets everywhere um and like you said you just wash what you brought yeah or Um, rewear something that's not quite dirty yeah we we actually learned this when we were doing missions work the first time we went on a trip we packed way too much stuff yeah and we had to carry that those backpacks everywhere and we actually got rid of a lot of stuff on the the trip (laughs) we gave it away and like villages were like hey here you go yeah um but that was when we learned that and now having kids the the first time we traveled with just Elliot yeah I remember we had like a huge suitcase we had backpacks each we had a bag for him I didn't we're just know. There. We, we didn't know we we're, we're like we don't need any of this stuff yeah so even when it comes to packing for your children just know that um they don't need as much as you probably they can think wear the same thing like every day I know they don't even care they don't even, they don't even think about it <laughs> so here's our, our tip number one is pack light yeah, it's going to make your tra- your going through the airports easier. It's going to make your going to and from the air- everything easier. So that's a good point. So tip number two is pack healthy snacks. Uh, snacks are important because yeah. it can get really expensive if you're in airports or gas stations just trying to get food. And usually those types of food are not going to make you feel good, yeah. not give you energy for you know the time that you're And you need traveling. energy and you're already going to be tired, so you need you need to just be healthy. Yeah. And so and we, we're not, we haven't been the best at this, but when you pack healthy snacks, Anytime your kids are like, we're just because they're going to be wanting to snack yeah. all the time. Yeah. It's just it's a comfort thing. Yeah, and you don't um, want to give them a lot of high sugar foods because that's going to make it harder yeah. for you in the long run. If, especially if you're on an airplane with a lot of people mm-hmm. or or even on a road trip, you don't want their attitudes, you know, to become poor or hard to yeah. deal with. So try and avoid those sugary snacks, and maybe yeah. you can give them some samples. Well, we've done um, examples. We've cut up carrots. And so you get a big carrot, you just cut them real small, and then you can give them little carrots. Um, mm-hmm. Apples. Uh, we've done nuts, 
and and uh, raisins and these kinds of things that are easy to pack. They're not liquid because you know you know airports have a problem yeah. with liquids. Um, but I actually believe that those um, those little food pouches that you get at this grocery store for babies yep. um, are great snacks. Yep. And I actually think they're small enough that they would they pass um, security. Yep, they do. Um, I would look into that to just make sure. I've but, brought them before. Um, yeah. yeah, and they, and they're just easy. Like they can suck them down. They're, they you roll them up. Yeah. They're clean. Put the cap back on it. They don't get messy <laughs> anywhere. Because that's the thing is you don't want messy stuff. Yeah, you have like this little area in it's front true. of you. Um, for adults, the RX bars. I think they have RX bars for kids now too. But those yeah. are really good. Yeah, the RX bars. There's minimal um, ingredients in them, and they're yeah. high in protein, and they fill you up. Mm-hmm. Um, those are the kinds of things that we like to bring, mm-hmm. just to to get us to and from you know the airports and to get to get us to hold us over until dinner when we can ha- when we go somewhere healthier yeah. or something somewhere we can control hey we just wanted to take a quick break from this week's episode to invite you and your spouse to take jennifer and i's 31 day marriage prayer challenge we wrote 31 prayers for my husband and 31 prayers for my wife to encourage couples in their prayer life for one another So if you're interested in taking our challenge, as thousands of couples have already done, please go to marriageaftergod.com forward slash challenge at the end of this episode, and you'll get more information about the challenge. Thousands of couples have already gone through this prayer challenge, and we're so excited to be able to extend this to you and invite you to participate. We dare your marriage. Um, So packing healthy snacks, again, don't pack too much because you're going to just not have enough room for it all, but pack enough for the way there. Mm -hmm. And then what you can do is you can restock up before you go home. Yeah. You know, so you don't have to bring both ways. Yeah. Unless you want to save the money and you're going to sacrifice room. But um, that's that's something we do. Again, something we didn't always do, but we've learned like we need to make sure that we have that. It saves us money. It saves us energy. And uh, yeah. it makes sure we have something available when the kids need something right then. Yeah. Especially when you're going through time zones, right? Cause oh, yeah. Sometimes dinner gets pushed back or you Yeah, would they be usually access. eating now, but you're not where you're going to yeah. go yet. So. Yeah. so make sure you have those snacks. So um, our next tip is actually packing a backpack with a, an extra pair of clothes for each person. And these are the type of clothes that you can mm-hmm. pack really light, like a light t-shirt and a pair of shorts. And this is just in case of an emergency. Um, we know with kids, like yeah. these kind of emergencies happen all the missing time. Missing luggage or... <laughs> yeah, you don't yeah. want your your luggage to be missing or packed in the back of the truck and you can't get mm-hmm. to it when or you there's need an, to. Or there's an accident on the plane or in the car and you can't get to where you yeah, need to go. Yeah, potty accidents just pull it out or right there. lots of you know, dirty clothes mm-hmm. going on. So we just encourage people and, and make sure you stuff a pair in there for yourselves too, because you never know yeah. what kind of messes will explode on your lap or <laughs> whatnot. <laughs> you and, you uh, never know. <laughs> the backpack that I usually pack for us, I usually stick the snacks that we were talking about in that backpack and diapers yeah. and wipes. So everything's right there, easy to get to. We don't have to go, go up into the overhead compartments. We right. just, we have all of our stuff that yep. are on our carry-ons. Yeah that are immediate use um, things. Yeah. So like this is especially a good tip if you are on an airplane and all your luggage is stowed away and you can't get to extra clothes, just make sure you have at least one backpack full of extras. Um, But a little bonus tip on this one to couple with the first tip you gave on packing light. Um, We've since learned to try and only pack and take what we can carry on yeah um, we don't like unless we're going to be gone for a very long time yeah. but even then we still try and make sure that because you can have a bag and you can have a carry-on bag and even the kids can have a bag and the kids can have bags <laughs> which we're going to get to in a minute mm-hmm. um and if you can try and get everything in your carry-on then you have everything with you which gets you through the airport way yeah. quicker yeah and you don't you're not going to have this fear of losing losing stuff because we've lost luggage before so this next tip is a is a fun family and corporative tip so like what you're going to do is is have your children pack their own backpacks. Help them get get them some clothes that they're gonna put in, give them some snacks that are gonna go in, and coloring and toys, and let them pack their own little backpack that they're gonna carry. Um, of course, if you have kids that can walk. Yeah. Um, and what it does is it, first of all, you, you get stuff that you're gonna need, necessities, on their carry-on well, because they're allowed help, to bring carry-on. Well, even if you're, um, this, it's good for airplane rides, but even for car rides, mm-hmm. it just, it, it helps them uh, stay entertained. Yeah, you can say, pull out your backpacks yep. and grab your book or grab a toy. Grab, grab coloring. something to color with. Coloring is really important. Um, and it also, it, it also invites them to be a part of the, the experience, they, the trip. Our kids get so excited when we say, okay, go get your backpack, you're going to pack it. And they're like running around the they're house so doing happy. stuff. And now we often have to take stuff out of it. Yeah, but. I was going to suggest on this tip that once the kids pack the back that the backpack, the parents then take it and kind of um, unpack organize it, it and organize it <laughs> yeah. um, just to make sure that everything in there is, is uh, you know, 
yeah. that needs to be in there. So like Olive will have her own little backpack with her mm-hmm. special toys in it, yeah. and Elliot will have his backpack with some crayons and books, and yeah. and it, it just makes them feel like that that they've prepared their own bag mm-hmm. because they have. Yeah. Um, but it also it's just strategic because. If you're trying to pack light, um, making sure that all everyone has a carry on, yeah. Because sometimes we put like a, ba- a pack of wipes yep. and some diapers in one of their bags. They help. Us. The, yeah, they help. Yeah. Or there's some snacks in some of their bags, mm-hmm. and so you spread out the thing, the necessities with their bags also. That's good. Um, and they're all accessible. Yep. They're all right there. So it's a fun one. I'd also say um, my kids have really enjoyed this, where uh, you know we go to the 99 cent store or Hobby Lobby, and we just pick a few things out that we know that they would enjoy, and we surprise them. So we stuff it in their bags, and they don't know, and so that. Oh, that's a cool during, one, yeah. during the trip they they, they find they're like oh my gosh what's this yeah and it just stimulates them for a little bit longer than their normal toys okay so the next tip is essentials are essential and we want this goes in conjunction with uh, packing light but we want to make sure that you guys are bringing the essentials and so for us essentials include um, grandmother spot treatment it's a small bottle like this big I get it at Hobby Lobby for like three something and yeah. um, it's it works wonders. So if you're out traveling and someone gets a stain on their shirt and you don't have access to laundry right away, you just put some of that on it, roll it up, and by the time you do get to um, wash it, it comes out. And so you wanna make mm. sure that clothes aren't being ruined or anything like that. On this one, also bring a little baggie of um, dry uh, laundry soap. That way, when you do get to the hotel or wherever you're staying in Airbnb, mm-hmm. you don't have to go to Target or somewhere yeah. For that essential, you already have it. In this one's been essential for us because if we use laundry detergent, um, my, my you and my, all the kids, yeah, me and all the kids get rashes because we they we have react. such sensitive skin. So we have to use our own detergent. So we bring powder stuff yep. with us, um, and then the, another thing that we bring always is a little bottle of Bronner's yep. um, soap. Which is great for everything. You can use it for anything. Washing your body. Washing you your can, hair. Washing your dishes. Wash washing your clothes. Everything. Uh, and That's actually a great one for yeah, camping. It's a great like. one for camping, but for for any sort of for travel. For anything, yeah. And they come in little tiny bottles, mm-hmm. um, or you can buy a small bottle and fill it up with a big bottle. Yeah, and, and we actually bring a small bottle, and I dilute it. I don't know if you know this, but as yeah. our trip progresses, yeah, I add just more water to add it, yeah. more water to it. So that's a really good one. Another essential that you want to make sure that you have is a first aid kit, especially with little kids. We've mm-hmm. run into um, accidents, <laughs> yeah. you know, injuries things that you know are yeah our kids toes bleeding or whatever and you just you need that first aid kit so it doesn't have to be a massive big one but just Mm -hmm. make sure you have something on hand Um, we use essential oils so I always make sure that we pack our oils band-aids nail spore and things like that so the next tip, um, you know, we just talked about essentials. An essential for us is making sure we always bring a pack and play. Yeah, this is going to be for the families yeah. that have the young kids. And we got a pack and play. I know pack and plays can seem bulky, but we got this one that like folds up into this box. It's so nice, you guys. Uh, like It's a little bit more expensive than most pack and plays, but this thing, we've taken it on every single trip. We've used it in our bedroom. We use it at guava. friends' houses. It's called guava. Yeah, and it's this little tiny pack and play. It folds super easy, and we've used it when we're in hotels. If you get stuck in an airport, you can open Mm -hmm. it up wherever. You can put a blanket over the top Mm -hmm. of it, and just having a pack and play so that your young, you know, toddler babies uh, have a place that they are comfortable with when you're traveling. And another thing that we've we've done and tried in the past is is if we're gonna if we know we're gonna be traveling and you know we have a new baby. We get them used to the pack and play before we leave. Right, using it at home. Using it at home so that they're used to it when we're at, you know, grandma's house or at a hotel or yeah. wherever we're going to be. And it just it really makes that transition of going from their comfort of their bed, their crib yeah. to being in a hotel. They're familiar. They're, they're familiar, familiar with it. It smells like they, you know, what they recognize the smell, it, they recognize the feel of it. Yeah. And so pack and play has been essential for us. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you guys have young toddlers or babies, um, they could even be a little bit older because some kids, they, they want the comfort of their bed. Yeah. You can get them used to it and they can sleep in that. And that way you can actually save money also on a, a, a hotel room if you need a hotel. Mm-hmm. Instead of getting multiple beds, you can do, you right. know, one bed with a pack and play. Um, but pack and play has been a, a, a main go-to for us when we go traveling. Mm-hmm. So the next tip is don't push your limits. Everyone in your family, your spouse, your kids, have different limits yeah. and what we found through our experience is that when you're traveling um, everybody's going to respond and react a little bit differently and we have to be aware of those limits we have to know yeah. when our kids um, are cr- going to crash and they need to go back to the hotel yeah. or back to the airbnb for a nap time um, and being willing to be flexible or even sacrifice some of the plans that you made in order to accommodate some of those yeah. limits i think is really important we, we've made big errors in this area where like we have this whole planned out trip 
And we were just like, no, we got to get to the next thing. No, we got to get to yeah, our with, kids are falling with apart. With two and three year olds, we're like, come on, guys, keep up with us. And, and we're we, like falling apart. And, but like even us, we have yeah. a different stamina than they do. So I think it's just recognizing that yeah. um, everyone in the family needs to accommodate everyone in the family. And I think yeah. that's important. Well, and recognizing that your kids are going to remember the, the that those feelings. Yeah. You know, you think you're trying to hit all these things. They're not going to remember every single thing you did, but They're they will remember, remember how it rush felt. Them. <laughs> yeah, they will remember how it felt. So yeah. uh, being patient with your family. Yeah. With yourself, even yeah. um, having a go- having plans, mm-hmm. but making sure that they're flexible. Yeah, because it's not the end of the world if you miss that one thing that you were supposed to do. Just if it me- means a healthier relationship with your family, and exactly. it, and the next thing you do is going to be that much more enjoyable. Right, which leads us into the next point. Yeah. So if you want to talk about that, well, the next bit. point is um, is getting our perspective right on the trip overall. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm notoriously bad at this. Um, I get into a place where I'm, I'm just like in this mode of we need to go or um, I'm frustrated because the kids are tired and they're crying. We haven't even uh, left yet. We haven't, yeah, we haven't even left yet and I'm like, Ugh. Um, You've gotten way better, but, by the way. Yeah, I've had to because I want to. I, I don't want my kids to have a, a bad memory yeah. of these fun things that we're trying to do with them. Right. And, you know, we talked about that mm-hmm. the, the summer outings mm-hmm. episode mm-hmm. of having the perspective of like, hey, it's not going to be perfect, right. but make it fun. Right. You know, have a good perspective of it. So have the same perspective um, when you're traveling. Someone um, once told me on our last trip, they just reminded me, they said, hey, just remember, they're kids and tr- it's hard. And so reminding me that it's going to be hard yeah. helped me not make it so hard. Mm-hmm. Because instead of going in with the expectation of, like this is going to work, mm-hmm. I just I went in and I was like, well, like what's happening right now? I knew it was going to happen. You know, the kids are crying. Okay, yeah. like it's it's difficult. This is hard for them. They're mm-hmm. tired. It's we've been traveling. They're in a new place. There's mm-hmm. loud noises. They're hungry. They're thirsty. They're uncomfortable. There's lots of things. Yeah. and just be, you know, as a husband and wife, preparing yourselves emotionally, mentally, spiritually yeah. before you even leave. Yeah, and um, and just putting yourself self in the right perspective mm-hmm. and just recognizing like this isn't just going to be all um, you know rainbows and butterflies yeah it won't always it's be going convenient. to be difficult mm-hmm. it's going to be inconvenient but the end result is going to be an adventure yeah and having that mindset so that you're not just getting push to the edge of your anger and you're not just frustrated all the time and mm-hmm. you're not you know snapping at your children and snapping at your wife and, mm-hmm. and vice versa but make but knowing like oh, okay we said this was gonna be hard like just we need to breathe you know let's go off into a corner somewhere let's pray together let's, let's <laughs> take a moment to pray together um, but just recognizing that the trip the trip isn't just going to be you know you know clean clean and free and clear from stress, stress or anxiety, or exa- or anxieties, yeah but that we you have young children mm-hmm. that like they're experiencing all this for the first time and they're not going to remember being tired mm-hmm. they're not going to remember crying they're not going to remember being you know hungry they're going to remember you being frustrated and they're going to remember you having an attitude and being angry and and rushing and and making this thing that's supposed to be exciting and fun and adventurous not any of those things <laughs> But you, you know, can, but you can pr- uh, protect that um, mm-hmm. perspective that they have of you by setting your heart right yeah. before you even leave. Yeah. So and the next tip is it kind of coincides with that last tip. Mm-hmm. It's just to remember that your kids are kids. Yeah. They're children. They're experiencing all this for the first time. They're excited. Yeah, they're excited. And a lot of times the reason we, when we're traveling, for me at least, when I get anxiety, when I get stressed out and frustrated, it's when I realize and feel like my family's being a burden on the world or bothering other people like my yeah. kids are playing and i'm like shh, shh be quiet stop yeah. stop it and yeah. like i'm trying stop to protect kicking the seat in front of you <laughs> yes the kick in the seat in front of you. we do try and stop them from that but recognizing that that's going to happen yeah. um and so reckon remembering that your kids are kids and they're going to do kid things yeah. And also that it's not your responsibility to make sure that the whole world is comfortable. Yeah. You know, all of the people on the, you know, you should definitely have your children in control Mm -hmm. as much as possible. You know, keep Mm -hmm. reminding them like, hey, we need to be respectful. Hey, you don't just run up and grab people's luggage. Right, but making sure that those corrections are happening with a good heart and good good intentions of trying to help your kids learn. And patience. Yeah. And understanding that they're probably super bored. Yeah. (laughs) You know, so trying to entertain them, talk to them, go for a walk with them. This Mm -hmm. is something that we do is like, let's walk around the airport. Yeah. Um, so that way they're entertained and they're not running around bothering people. Yeah, this is this is how um, earlier I said that, you know, it just looks different now. So mm-hmm. instead of us being on our phones watching a movie or something on the airplane, now we are engaging with our children. And yeah. I think that that's just one of the ways that I just thought of that it does look a little bit yeah. different. Like to sacrifice what you would probably want to do in that moment to make sure that your kids are being yeah. entertained, engaged. They'll make and, the plane flight much more um, enjoyable yeah. for them, for you, for, yeah. the, for your, the passengers. Yeah. Um, the other thing I want to say is... Uh, 
you know, I, I used to think like, man, my kids are just bothering everyone and you, you just feel like everyone's looking at you. But what we've experienced is we always like, we've, we've experienced that people are not nearly as bothered as we think they are, well, first of all. That's true. And also because of the more kids that we're having, we're, we get separated on planes sometimes. And I look <laughs> over at you and now, I'm like, just, it's not that loud. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's not as bad as you think it is. Yeah, because you think it's super loud and like the only people that can really hear it is the people that are directly in front of you maybe yeah. um, or directly behind you. But, you know, every single time we've been on a plane with our kids, the people around us, they're like leaning in. Hey, it's not bothering us at all. They're oh, it's so, so encouraging. Your, your kids are so cute. Yeah. For some reason, there's just something beautiful about mm-hmm. people seeing you. You know, try they 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 commiserate with you first mm-hmm. of all because mm-hmm. they're uncomfortable too. They're on this yeah. plane flight and their butt hurts and like, <laughs> um, and they oftentimes they're they're not anywhere close to what mm-hmm. I think they're thinking of us. Um, and to be honest, if you are bothering one person, you can apologize to them or not say anything and yeah. they'll get over it because they're going to get off the plane and they're never going to think about it again. And neither are you. That's the thing is yeah. you're probably not going to think about that person that huffed or sighed yeah. or whatever. So just remembering kids are kids. They're going to do kids things. Yeah. They're going to be bored. And just to not be overwhelmed by thinking that your kids have to be so perfect that you're not going to bother anyone because mm-hmm. that's just not the case. Your yeah. kids could be as perfect as possible and you will probably still bother someone <laughs> just because you have children around. So just having that perspective, just like the last tip yeah. um, of, you know, so that you're not making sure sh- you're not putting an expectation on your children that shouldn't be there. Yeah. We just wanted to take a quick break to ask you if you are enjoying this content, would you please leave a star review and a comment review? This helps us spread the word about Marriage After God and and just all the episodes that we have to offer. And we would love uh, just to get that reach out there. So please, again, if you have a moment, just um, take that time to leave a star review and a comment review for us. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the episode. So the next tip is a little bit more about logistics, um, Mm -hmm. but it's a really important one to me. It's something that I kind of tackle when we go to prepare for traveling, but it's it's preparing your itinerary. And the reason that this is so Mm -hmm. important is because, um, well, what I like to do is, depending on how many days or where we're going, I like to write down where exactly we're staying, the address, phone number, um, just any sort of important details and how someone else could get a hold of us in case of an emergency. And then I take that itinerary, which I usually make in Google Docs, and I send it to um, two to three people that aren't going to be on the trip with us just so Mm -hmm. that they know where we are, what we're doing, and how to get a hold of us. And I feel like that's really important because if there was an emergency on our end or on their end, it just makes it a lot easier than someone Mm -hmm. wondering like, oh, I don't know where they're going, you know. No, it's a good good point. We give it to a couple friends of ours. Um, and then some, if we're not going to be going to family, we'll get, we'll send it to our families yeah. and that way they are aware. Yeah. They know where we're going. It's also good. I, I like to print mine out and I'll even, if we have like an amusement park or a museum or mm. something that we're going to go visit on a certain day, I'll make sure that I know, um, that I have written down the price of admission and the times, the hours of operation. That way we know, okay, it, you know, things change or we need to be mm. flexible with nap time. Um, we know how long it's open till. And so we yeah. have all the information information on hand and I don't have to go search it on my phone. You've always been really good at this. Yeah. Doing you you actually like planning. I like it. Yeah. I like it. So if there's a planner in your family, give them that task. (laughs) Yeah. And so um why don't you share with them the this is we were only gonna do ten, but there's a bonus one. Why don't you share the bonus one with them? So the bonus one this one's my based off of my something that I struggle with. It was both of us, but um (laughs) this bonus one we wanted to give to you guys is just um something that we've learned from experience that has really um helped us on the coming home of a trip yeah. of travel. I'll give an example before you say what it okay. is. Um, so we'll go do this amazing trip, you know, something, you know, tons of fun. And then on the way home, you know, the plane flight was hard. The kids you're were tired. crying, you're tired. And so you get home and the peop- your friends are like, oh, so how was the trip? Oh, it was awesome. But you know, man, the trip, the flight home was just so terrible. I the was last tired thing on your kids, mind was just not a good experience. The kids were just wouldn't even sleep. And so all they heard out of my mouth was like, Oh, so your trip was not good at all? (laughs) (laughs) So after this happening, uh, several times, we talked about it and we just felt like, okay, on our next trip, we need to make sure that we're remembering the highlights. We're remembering the good times. And telling people those things. (laughs) Well, and it's not that you have to leave out those bad things because it all is part of the trip. But we wanted to make sure that we were um, Mm -hmm. sharing the blessing of being able to travel with the people that were asking us how it was going. And not just that, but for our family's sake. So when we're on the airplane home or the road trip home, we are asking our kids, okay, what was your highlight? You know, out of all the things that we got to do, what was 
what was your favorite part or you know what stood out to you and then we get to talk about it so not only does it um, stimulate conversation and communication mm -hmm. within the family but then it also leaves just that good taste in your mouth when you get home and people are asking you how your trip was yeah so a better way that I could respond in the future is hey there was a couple of you know hard spots in the traveling but overall it was such a good trip we did this this and this yeah um, so that I'm not lying you know <laughs> but um, but the positive things are the things that I remember and it, it, this triggered um, not just because I, I, that's how I was. I would often just bring out the negative. We started hearing our son when we would ask about things we did. Yeah. He would only bring up the negative things. The, the thing, you know, when he was hard or he missed out on the thing or he got hurt. Mm -hmm. And we're like, what is he doing? He and was mimicking us. <laughs> he was mimicking us. And so now we're like, okay, how can we just talk we about the positive, the positive things? Because overall yeah. the trip was awesome. It's yeah. not like anything really bad happened at all. Yeah. Um, so that we're remembering positive things and not remembering like, oh, that was a hard trip. Right. When so, it really wasn't. So on the way home, even even if it's a hard on the way home, uh, be sure to talk about those highlights and, and just talk to your family about yeah, what And highlight what the positive up. things yeah. so that your kids hear the positive things and they remember the positive things. It's right. just a good, it's like, um, it's just reinforcing those, mm -hmm. those good things. Yep. Okay, so there's one last thing that we wanted to share with yeah. you guys about traveling as a family that is really important to us. And again, it just came through experience of doing it yeah. as a family. And making mistakes. And making course. mistakes, of course. So the whole reason we started this podcast and we bring this up every single time is that we're trying to be a marriage after God. Mm -hmm. And we talk about family being a ministry in this um, to each other and in the world. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to read a couple of scriptures here. And the first one's going to be, uh, it's going to be Romans 12, 18. And it says this, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. And so this scripture, you know, Paul's talking to the Romans and he's telling them, he's saying, hey, live at peace as much as you can, because there's going to be times that you just can't, mm -hmm. but live at peace with, when it's in your strength. And so just to remember, just to remind you that when you're traveling, it's what you're doing as a family is not just for your own sake. Mm -hmm. Like even on the be on the plane or communicating with the um, stewardesses or the, the the agents at the desk or wherever you're at when you're renting the car or the hotel the family reunion the family your your family unit and how you react with each other and interact with each other is a witness to the world yep. either of the goodness of God's grace or of a false gospel that's teaching the world like oh that you know they don't even love each other like mm -hmm. they call themselves Christians but look how frustrated they are look yeah. how negative they are look how angry, look how bad, you know mad the father is right now mm -hmm. they see those things um, a perfect example of this, uh, we, you know, we we were coming back from a vacation with our family, and we came in at like late at night, and we had the last flight of the night to go from where we were going to home, mm -hmm. and we get off the plane. The plane was late. And we get off the plane, and they had like five minutes earlier shut the door to the other plane. But the plane was still sitting the there. The plane was still sitting there. It made it so frustrating. And for we're us. literally we're literally there sitting there with uh, me and Jennifer and our two kids and um, friends of ours and their two kids, and we're all sitting there. It's the middle of the night, and they're like, "Sorry, there's not a flight for a couple days." Like literally, that's what they told us. Two and a half days. And I'm like exploding. <laughs> I'm like so angry. I'm tired. First of all, all of our kids are hungry, tired, exhausted, mm -hmm. and I'm just saying, I'm like, you're literally not going to open the door for us. Mm -hmm. They're like, nope, it's against our policy. And I try. I was not being a very good witness. I was letting the circumstances. I was letting my emotions. I was letting my flesh get in control. And the think about the example I was setting for mm -hmm. this guy that's just doing his job. Mm -hmm. He had. I mean, he could. Who knows what kind of control he had. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like livid. And I let the circumstances dictate the witness I had. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to remind us that when we're traveling as a family, it may be for vacation or, you know, a business or whatever it is, we're, do, we're in ministry. Yeah. We're a marriage after God. We're a ministry as a family. And we need to be walking at peace as much as possible mm -hmm. with outsiders, people that d maybe don't know the Lord mm -hmm. and they're looking at us and somehow they're going to see us either being good examples of the gospel or bad examples of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And another scripture I want to read is in, is in Colossians 4, 5 through 6. And it says this, Walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. And this just reinforces what I was just saying. Making sure that our, we're walking in wisdom towards outsiders. Mm -hmm. When they see our family traveling, are they seeing the love of God? Are they seeing the, the fruits of the Spirit in, our, in ourselves? It doesn't mean we're perfect, but are they seeing, you know forgiveness and apology are they seeing patience and like hey let's take a moment let's breathe let's praise a family mm -hmm. you know oh we're not going to talk that way to the stewardess because we're frustrated we're going to actually we we believe in that god's going to take care of us we're going and they see this in our family mm -hmm. that's the whole point yeah that's what we're doing in this world and so that's just my final tip for you guys in traveling is recognizing that your family is a witness mm -hmm. 
And we even tell our kids this. I, I was going to say, before we even go on our trip, we share, you share this mm-hmm. with our kids. Yeah, we say, hey guys, we're going to be an example. Mm-hmm. There's going to be other kids that are going to watch how you are. Mm-hmm. There's going to be other families looking at how we interact as a family. Mm-hmm. There's going to be um, people that don't have children watching us. And like, what kind of example are we going to be? Mm-hmm. Are we going to be good examples, guys? Are we going to have good attitudes and just, um, you know, joyful spirits and, 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 um, obedience and kindness mm-hmm. and gentleness and you know that it really helps set their minds yeah. and hearts in the right place mm-hmm. and you know what happens if they ever start like getting you know out of out of order or disobedient we'll say hey guys remember we're being an example yeah. and it actually helps them remember and they're like oh oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and because they, they want they, they the want to have that responsibility yeah. and then they so we, what we do is we give them a higher purpose mm-hmm. I like that word you used mm-hmm. Um, so these are all great tips to, for traveling, but this last one is the purpose yeah. of if we're going to be traveling, what does our life look like as a family, you know, as a husband and a wife and our children and how are we representing Christ to the world? So we just want to encourage you with all these. And if you're going to be traveling soon, I hope that this blessed you and that you use some of these tips to make your traveling experience much more um, uh, blessed, joyful, uh, and purposeful. Thank you guys so much for joining us this week and we'll see you next time. Did you enjoy today's show? Find many more encouraging stories and resources at marriageaftergod.com and let us help you cultivate an extraordinary marriage.